Hello, this PowerPoint video is an introduction to the geology of the southern portion of the San Joaquin Valley, California. This video is prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 1801 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website at www.buenavistamuseum.org. Buena Vista Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit institution. Information on this video is presented for the enjoyment of the public. Permission has been obtained to use copyrighted graphics and photos in this presentation. All graphics and photos are attributed to the appropriate source. The Southern San Joaquin Valley is a low flat landform surrounded on three sides by mountains. On the east are the Sierra Nevada Mountains. On the southeast are the Tehachapi Mountains. South and southwest is the San Emidio Range. The Timblor Range bounds the valley on the west. The low hills in the middle of this photo in front of the Tehachapi Mountains are composed of valley sediments that were folded into hills. For perspective, let's use a false color satellite image to show landforms of central and southern California. California possesses 11 major landform provinces, eight of which are outlined in black on the map. If you are a California native, you'll recognize province names such as the Sierra Nevada Mountains, San Joaquin Sacramento Valley, also known as the Great Valley, and coast ranges. These three provinces are all northwest southeast oriented and extend north nearly to the Oregon border. But all three terminate in Kern County, which is outlined by the yellow box. Thus, Kern County is where Northern California landform provinces meet those of Southern California, such as the Transverse Ranges and Mojave Desert. So why do landform provinces exist? Landforms are strongly related to their geologic history and to a lesser extent, weather and climate. For instance, some areas collect sediment that turns into sedimentary rock when buried. Other areas are uplifted, giving us mountains. Geologists think the mountains bordering the San Joaquin Valley have been uplifted and eroded for millions of years, while the valley has been an area where sediment shed off the mountains, collected and sunk, turning into sedimentary rock. The process of sinking is called subsidence. Buildup of sediment layers over millions of years generates a basin of sediment. Today's San Joaquin Valley is the landform on top of the San Joaquin Basin sediments. I'll use the words basin and valley interchangeably. The next two slides illustrate how well the landform boundaries match with geology. Geologists love to use colors on maps to differentiate rocks. Geologic maps show rock types, ages, and other features at the Earth's surface. You can see a pale pink color dominates the Sierra Nevada mountains. To a lesser extent, you'll see ribbons of green. The pink represents granitic type igneous rock exposed at the Earth's surface. The dark green represents recrystallized metamorphic rock. A cluster of volcanic rocks near Tehachapi is bright red and pink. The San Joaquin Valley is dominated by yellow, tan, and brown colors of mostly young sedimentary rock. In the lower left corner, brown represents older sedimentary rock once buried in the San Joaquin Valley, which has been uplifted into the Timblor or Coast Range Mountains. I've also labeled unseen areas of long-term subsidence, such as the Button Willow, Tejon, and Maricopa Depot Centers. Let's simplify this map with color overlays that emphasize the landform provinces you saw earlier. I have shaded this map with the three dominant colors seen on the previous slide. All of the Sierra Nevada mountain province is shown as pink. All of the San Joaquin or Great Valley province is yellowish tan, and the eastern edge of the Timblor or Coast Range province is brown. This video exclusively deals with the yellowish tan San Joaquin Valley. Beneath the San Joaquin Valley, there is great complexity in the unseen rock layers. Faults and folds are common. The oldest layers, such as these 40 million year old sediments, remain buried except on the basin periphery. 
Sediments fill the San Joaquin Basin via rivers such as the Kern River. The steep-walled Kern River Canyon, which carries Sierra Nevada sediment, is in the center of this photo. For much of geologic time, sediments exited the river into an arm of the Pacific Ocean, as you'll see later. This photo shows the Kern River Canyon that you saw on the previous slide. Erosion grinds these boulders into smaller rock particles that will end up on the valley floor. Pictured are layers of silt, sand, pebbles, and cobbles carried onto the valley floor by the Kern River. Today, due to upstream diversion by dams, the Kern is no longer the mighty erosional force of spring snowmelt. Geologists call this display a cross-section. It represents what you might see if you cut the San Joaquin Basin in half. The youngest sedimentary rocks are colored yellow and tan, while the oldest are brown. The basin bottom or basement rock is pink. As more sediment was shed into the basin, the more the basin sunk, accommodating the load. We don't know exactly how much sediment has filled the basin, but in places it is more than five miles thick. Note that the horizontal scale is compressed about 10 times greater than the vertical scale. Let's go back in time and see what the San Joaquin Valley used to look like. In this slide are six map snapshots of the San Joaquin Basin from 59 million years ago to 600,000 years ago. Orient your location by finding the cities. Dendritic black lines represent rivers that flowed from the Sierra Nevada or Timbloor Mountains. Areas where sediment accumulated are variously colored green, orange, maroon, or blue. The reason for these different colors will become apparent in the next slide. Geologists call these maps paleogeographic maps. As you can see, the San Joaquin was frequently covered by water, either the Pacific Ocean or a large lake. After 600,000 years ago, Lake Corcoran, also known as Lake Clyde, filled with sediment and the valley has remained dry since. The previous slide showed map views of the San Joaquin Valley through time. You may need to click this slide once to start an animation. This slide shows a cross-section of layers of sediment building up on the valley floor. As each successive layer of sediment appears, the preceding layer sinks below the blue water layer on top and subsequently turns into rock. This is how the Pacific Ocean, which was never more than one to 2,000 feet deep, continually accommodated tens of thousands of feet of sediment. Most of the sediment arrived in the valley over the last 10 million years. You can match the layer color to the green, orange, and maroon on the previous slide. On the previous map, where the ocean or lake covered the accumulating sediment, you only see blue. San Joaquin rock layers have been subject to many stresses or pressures. We see the results of pressure by looking at faults and folds of the once horizontal rock layers. The next few slides show two folds and one fault. This photo shows Elk Hills, a large hill that developed as a fold that breached the valley floor. You are seeing more than one hill, hence the name Elk Hills. Folds can be large or small. Here you see a small fold of quartz-rich rock of the Monterey Formation. The rock is about 10 million years old, but the folding occurred much more recently. A blue-handled rock pick is shown at the base of the outcrop for scale. Another common rock reaction to stress is to break. When rocks break, and one body of rock moves up, down, or laterally relative to another rock, the broken surface is called a fall. In the slide, multicolored shales are offset by a small one-foot fault shown by the black line. The layers on the right side of the photo are lower than those on the left side. Like folds, faults can be small or very large. There are many faults and folds beneath the San Joaquin Valley that we cannot see. So how do we know rock layers exist beneath the San Joaquin Valley? There are many techniques that give us scientific data regarding what's underground. 
Seismic lines are images of sound waves that reflect off layers of rock below ground. Interpreting multiple two-dimensional images gives a three-dimensional picture. In the graphic on the left, the two-dimensional seismic reflection data is black and white, but colored lines running from left to right represent interpretations of layers by the geologist. You also see vertical colored lines. They represent faults, planes of rock layers that have been broken by the earth's stresses. A second type of information is well logs. Well logs are measurements taken from holes drilled for oil, gas, and water. The logs are measurements of geophysical properties like sound, radioactivity, and electricity within the drilled rock. In the graphic on the right, each wiggly vertical line on the paper represents these measurements. The orange shaded zones appear to be sandstone layers. Geophysical data from multiple wells combined with seismic data give us a three-dimensional picture of rock layer orientation and depth. There are an amazing number of tiny fossils in sedimentary rock. These are called microfossils. You won't see them displayed next to dinosaur bones in a museum, but microfossils are more important to understanding the rocks. Animals living in the oceans or lakes often create exoskeletons or shells to protect themselves when living. When they die, the shells are often preserved because they are made of a mineral. Oil, gas, and water wells drill through layers of rock and the shells are brought to the Earth's surface. Geologic processes are dynamic. They continually change the landscape. But these processes usually operate very slowly. How quickly the San Joaquin Valley will change is unknown. But understanding the present is key to understanding the past and the future. Thank you for viewing this video, and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. Look for other videos regarding Kern County's geology and mineral history. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science at 1801 Chester Avenue, Bakersfield, California, or visit our website at www.buenavistamuseum.org.